Okay, for this chapter two, let's go over a quick review. Okay. We said that uh, we have something we call it simple interest rate and compound interest rate. Simple interest rate, that means very straightforward. You give me, you know, what's your uh, payment now? Give me how many years, you know, the, uh, the interest rate will be, you know, uh, after like three years, two years, one year. I can tell you what's the total amount. So like in this example, I deposited my money now, 100,000. How much that money would be after three years? So what's the equivalent of this money after three years? Or in other words, the money now, how much it will be in the future after three years? So in order to do that, if I want to use simple interest rate, just I need from you the interest rate and the uh, number of years. Number of years is a three, interest rate is 10%. So we apply very simple formula that everybody knows. Okay, every year we say it's gonna be 10%. How much is 10% out of 100,000? 10,000. So 10,000 plus 10,000 plus 10,000, that's 30,000. So your amount of interest rate after three years is 30,000. This is interest amount interest amount how to get it you can use this formula p equal n i you give me the p hundred thousand how many years is three 0 0.1 percent i'm all set or you can do it simple way 10 percent uh, 10 thousand plus 10 thousand plus 10 thousand it's up to you but it's easier to see it in this format get more organized this is interest amount but what is the future equivalence of that money in the future, how much that money worth? That means the total amount plus interest rate. How much is it in the future? It's going to be 100,000 plus the 30,000. Okay? So just be careful about three factors. Interest rate, it is a percentage. We have interest amount is how much every year, you know, the interest rate is equal to based on the principal. This is the principal, the first amount. And the third one, what is the total in the future? So that means it is the principal plus the, well, the interest amount. So it is the principal plus the interest amount. This is 130. And that's what we come up with this formula. Okay. It is P plus the P and I's. That means the money or the amount you are making every day with interest rate. This is simple interest rate. Compound interest rate is different. See, in interest rate, the total amount, which is the future, is what? Is the principal plus every year, okay, how much you are, uh, how much is the amount? So let's say you have year one. You made PI, you multiply it, you can get this. It's easy. So it's the same. You can see it the same. The only thing here is changing is N. Could be one, two, three, four. But it's very straightforward. Compound interest rate is not that way. Compound interest rate, the first year is very similar to, to simple. So the first year, uh, simple interest rate, uh, it is P plus PI. One, because it's one year. Compound interest rate is the same thing. It is P plus PI plus one. But where is the difference after one year? Because compound interest rate work on the previous amount, not the principal amount. Simple interest rate is always you have the principal plus PI. And in compound, no, it goes, let's say, second year. Second year, what's going to happen? I'm going to include the PI with respect to the previous amount. So if it is a three, then I will have here this amount on the top of it is PI. So there is always interest on the previously, you know, uh, earned interest rate amount. So let's say, take a look at this example quickly. We discussed that before. 
at year at year one it's very straightforward you take the previous one what's the previous one at zero ah uh, you know a year zero it was the principal so it is hundred thousand the interest rate on that is ten percent so the amount is ten thousand so your total amount after one year the future amount is what is hundred thousand the principal plus the previous one which is what ten thousand okay year two is different you do not take the principal again you do not take hundred thousand you take the previous one what's the, what was the previous one is the amount you paid with interest so it is hundred ten not a hundred principal will make it hundred always no here we take the previously one you know uh used so a hundred ten thousand you get the interest rate of that then you do not add principal plus the amount you add the previous the new one here we get plus what well, plus also the new amount of interest okay so we have two things here different we are using this uh the previous amount and we are using the new interest amount while in the simple it's always what it's always ten thousand and hundred thousand ten thousand hundred here no we go with now no, let's say three a three what is gonna do is gonna go to the previous one what was it which already paid interest on 121 okay we get the interest amount based on the previous one so we have 121 is used and so this is we call it compound and you can see the difference simple interest rate is 130 after three years compounded is 133 that means the more you know years you know you um, have your loan the more money you will pay but to avoid this confusion guys the good news is we don't have to deal you know this is here simple interest uh, amount We don't have to deal with all this. We have to deal with, you know, equations. They said, you know what? Don't worry about this compound interest rate. We have a solution for you. Any amount you want to know what is it in the future, all what you have to do, use a formula. We call it standard factor notation. Okay, which we are going to see later on. Uh, so we have formula, real formulas we can use in Excel sheet, or we can have, or your calculator, okay, or we can have a standard factor not notation, which we call it this, you know, it will be this shape. I'm going to discuss it in a bit, but let's go first with the formula. Formula, it is very simple, okay, most of the factor notations they have formula formula would allow you to use your calculator to to need to get your uh, answer factor notation you need to use a table in order to know certain you know values as we are going to see so let's start with the formula you give me now uh, the present worth and the interest after how many years you want it i can tell you exactly what's the future amount okay so if you want to go back to this example you have present worth 100 year three that's n interest rate is 10 percent. i can use a formula i can use f multiplied by one plus i to the power n I is given, N is given, and P is given. I'm all set. It's 133. So I don't have to go through that. Okay. This is, I call it formula. So let's say I want uh, now to get P. I, you know, I want to say, I would like to have in the future $130,000. How much I should deposit now in the bank if the interest rate is 10%? Okay. Same thing. Give me F. I and N, I can get you how much you have to deposit in the bank now. This is, we call it formula. For most of the time, most of the time, 
you know, unless it's like geometric, you know, uh, gradients, which we are going to discuss. Uh, the formula can be represented also by factor notation. Okay. So, if I have, if I want to get something from the present to the future, that means I'm looking for F. I can use this formula or I can use this. F is P multiplied by this notation. F, P, I, N. So, give me N. Give me I and give me P. I can get you F. I'm going to show you that in a second. Another thing what we can do, we can use Excel sheet. We can use Excel sheet. So let's do an example using uh, factor notation. Okay. Um, but since I have this one handy, I'm going to start using the formula. Okay. I'm going to start using the formula. So let's say I have $5,000 I want to deposit now. I would like to know this $5,000, how much is it in the future? How much is it in the future? Well, this is easy. If you want to use the formula, back to here, I want to use the formula. Okay? Or you want to use Excel sheet, or you can even use the standard notation. So let's say I want to use the formula. How are we going to apply it? Okay, it's very straightforward. We said based on the formula, future of the money is what is P1 plus I to the power N. Do you have the present uh, worth now, the initial uh, deposit? Yeah, 5,000. I have 8%, so 0 0.8. 0 0.8 plus 1 will make it 1.08. Well, how many years? N is after 10 years. So this we call it cash flow diagram, remember? P, that means cash out of flow. You know, this uh, This is, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. This P is cash out of flow because you can see the arrow is downward because I'm paying. Here I'm making, so it is cash inflow. Anyway, so the arrow is up. Uh, this is the way I use the formula. How I'm going to use the equation? How I'm going to use the equation? Well, we have a table. In the table, I will give you, you know, this notation here. I can give you the value. Just give me, what do you have here? So here I have FP. I is 8%. N is 10%. So what is FP here? You go to the table. Okay, this is our table. Um, let me get you the Adobe, so it will make it easier on you, because I cannot open them at the same time. Okay, we have a table we are going to use in a second. Uh, just keep in mind, this notation, it is not F divided by P. We're not saying this. This is a notation. So, always you give me I and N, I can find you this one here. Okay. So let's take a look at it quickly. Okay, in your book, you know, let's say you have a book, textbook, or you can find it over the internet using Excel sheet. We are looking for interest rate. If you take a look at it, interest rate, I needed 8% based on my example. Okay. Uh, based on my example, it was 8%. So this is 15%. I is 15%. This is very important. Go with the I. Okay, this is uh, 10. Okay, 9. So 8%. In this chart, which is very important chart. Okay, if you take a look at it quickly. Okay, we have number of N. N could be years, month, but you know, you just be consistent. If everything in the equation is in years, so you have to stick with years. So we have everything in years. So we're assuming N here is in years. Okay, we need N uh, equal 10. Okay, let's say. If you take a look at it. Okay, we need N as what? Well, 10 years. Okay, you can see it here, 10 years. And I is 8%. And I'm looking for what? I'm looking for P to F. 
That means I want to go from the present to the future. P to F. So I want to know this present, how much it will be in the future. P to F. So this P to F factor, I have to find it here. P to F factor. Okay. P to F. This is P, F to P. P to F from the present to future. 8%. Here is what? Is 10. Okay. So it will be 2.1589. Again, let me repeat. This is going from the present to the future. I is given 8% and N is 10 years. So the, the value of this notation is what? 2.1589. And that's why you can see it here. I put 2.1589. So you do not divide f by v. No, this is a notation. We call it factor notation. Okay, we call it factor notation. So where do you get this from? From the table. So again, let's go over this quickly. P is given 5,000. It is now. It is You are depositing now. It's 5,000. Uh, I want to know how much this P in the future. Okay, I have two, three ways to solve it. The first way, using the formula. The formula is telling you is telling me if you have a present, you get you you got I, you got N, I can get the future amount. Okay. So you apply it. You give me P five thousand dollars. P equals five thousand dollars. One plus I, I is zero point eight to the power N. N is numbers of years, ten. Okay. So now I can tell you how much the present worth of the money is going to equal or be equivalent to in the future after how many years? 10 years. Okay? It is this amount. Another way to do it, if you don't like to deal with your calculator, you can go to the table and you say, hey, I want to go from the present to the future. From the, from the present to the future. That means I want the future equivalent. So I am looking for F. I need the future equivalent. I have a present and I want to know how much is it in the future. So I will say, use this notation. P multiplied by this notation. P to F. I'm transferring the money from P to F. I should be given and should be given. This is only a factor I use here in the table. I want to go from P to F, okay, from P to F, 8%, N is 10, I use this, so the notation is equal, equivalent to what, equivalent, this notation is equivalent to um, 2.1589, multiplied by what, the present, you know, the present value, okay, be careful, don't lose it. So you are going to find it similar uh, answer, similar answer. Another one, you know, we, we can take a look at it. Another one is uh, another way I want to say is Excel sheet. Excel sheet will make it much easier. Okay. We'll come back to this later on. Excel sheet uh, will make it way much easier. In Excel sheet, you can open your Excel sheet. Okay. Let's open our Excel sheet. Um, okay, so back to this, uh, you know, example. We have here uh, P equals to 5,000. Why we call this P? Because it's the money you are going to pay now or you're going to deposit in the bank now, okay? So it is what? It is uh, 5,000, okay? I want to know how much this money will be in the future equivalent to. How much is going to be equivalent to in the future? Okay. Give me the interest rate and number of years. I can tell you how much is it. How? I can use two things. Actually, three. It's either I use the equation formula 
or uh, you know uh, another equation uh, type which we call it factor notation okay if you don't like these and you want something very quick you can use excel sheet which is very easy so let's go first solve it with the formula how are we going to solve it with the formula it's very simple so but you have to be careful what is f what is p okay you are depositing money now this is 5000 this is now that's p i want the future of this that's f so let's solve it f equal based on the formula is uh, p multiplied by 1 plus i to the power n okay how much is p 5000 what is this 1.8 it is 1 plus the interest rate so 1 plus 0 8 to the power 10 n is the number of years that means how much this money would be equivalent to after 10 years n is 10 okay you got this you're already set just do the math is there another way yes there is another way as i said using the factor notation this factor notation is telling you if you want to get the future value of the money the equivalence of your present now money what do you do uh, give me p multiply it by this factor notation where i can get the fa this factor notation this factor notation is telling me get p and transfer it to f okay so it's from the present domain to future domain so it is not f divided by p i is given n is given okay you go to your textbook or any you know excel sheet okay we are gonna search for what interest rate eight percent why eight percent because that's what they are looking for eight percent okay they are looking for eight percent so we go back here this is eight percent eight percent n is ten percent what we are looking for the factor from the present to the future okay if you take a look at it again from the present to the future when whenever you are getting f that means you use p to f p to f this is the way you read it so we need p to f 10 it is 2.1 be careful about the interest rate as i said okay it's 8 10 we need p to f 2.1589 okay we are all set 2.589 this is the answer similar to this is there another way yes there is another way with excel sheet first of all let's put our variable how much is i we said it is 10 percent let's make this uh, way bigger now way bigger so you can see it okay the i is how much uh, interest rate we said eight percent so we're gonna put eight percent okay so this one here is 0 0.8 percent be careful you know sometimes the excel sheet will round it and we said it's 10 okay we put 10 this is number of years so this is years okay and here we have interest rate so this is the rate okay what else we have we have um the amount how much is the amount which is the present it says five thousand dollars so i put five thousand dollars okay now how i'm gonna find what do i need i need to find f f is how much okay you find f. this is easy look what's gonna if you keep this excel sheet active you can solve anything you know similar to that you're gonna say hey what is f f is equal to okay you go here put equal i'm looking for future so i use the function f v okay 
once I do that, you can see right away, okay, it's showing me FV, it's telling me what's your rate. I will say my rate is this. Then it's going to ask me, okay, what is my number of years, the period? It is 10. Then it's going to ask me, ask me, hey, how many payments? I don't have any payments. I don't have a payment, which we'll talk about it later on. So I'm going to skip this. I put another, you know, comma. Now, uh, comma. Now, what else? I have the present. Yes. How much is it? It is 5,000. Enter. Okay. We can get, this is showing me red because it is a negative. Okay, it's a negative. So how much we had it in Excel sheet? Same amount. Very similar. In Excel sheet, we have it 10,794.50. Okay, this is 0.62. So this is a very simple way. Now let's have the opposite. Let's say I have the future amount. It is this amount. So this is this here, as I said, red one with the you know with the bracket means is negative. This is the real one. So it is one so you can see here I did some rounding. If you don't want to do some rounding, it's up to you. Okay, now I have F. I have I and the same. I need to get what P. How much is P? So this is a good question. Okay, all what I have to do, we go here, put equal. Now I don't need uh, FV. I need B P V P V. Okay. What's the rate? It's still zero eight. Okay. What else I have? Period is ten. Then I click. What is my payment? I don't have any payment, so I skip. So you can see here we have two commas. What's the future? I have the future now, so I select this, click enter, and here you go. So this is the way I can get F or p using excel sheet so i'm getting here f based on p and here i'm getting p based on 